We good? Thank you, Joe. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Tenuta. This is the Education and Economic Development Committee uh, meeting for today. Uh, the time is now 420. I'd like to call the Education and Economic Development meeting uh, to order. Uh, let's see here. Please note, uh, there's, the meeting is being transmitted via live video. Uh, the public can find the link to the video stream by visiting Orange County website, www.orangecountygov.com, clicking on the tab for the legislature and located uh, the education and economic development meeting on the calendar. I ask at this time you please silence your cell phones, tablets, and other electronic devices. Thank you. Uh, a note, please be mindful that the microphones in the statutory room are very sensitive. Uh, at this time, I would also ask that you please rise for critical allegiance and a moment of reflection. And I would ask that legislative Sutherland start us. Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Ramos? Thank you. Ramos? Present. Chavez? Here. Massey? Here. 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 Thank you very much for reform. Uh, first order of business uh, is Dr. Young, President of Orange County Community College, and uh, Paul Moreland for Vice President uh, of Administration, Finance for Orange County Community College. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? We just did this one. I am a proud director of the Orange County Community College. So am I. See? I was a trustee. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was also the president of the Senate. Oh, yeah. Very good. Well, welcome. And, and thank you for being here. Alum, chair, chair, yes, alum. alum, yes, that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like full run at the table today. <laughs> hey, hey, they were our classes, by the way. <laughs> See how good a program it was? Well, thank you, e, &E committee. Uh, for those who were, were not here uh, at the previous meeting, we thank the, the joint committee for convening. We thank e, e always, and this is a, a, a joyful day for us to be at this table for bringing this contract forward for your consideration and hopeful approval. This is a, an agreement with the faculty association, the, the college, and, and the county. Uh, this is a contract with the faculty association that has been out uh, for five years, so the contract for your consideration uh, would be looking five years in the rearview mirror and two years looking forward to seven year contract. This would be with full time faculty, several others who are covered by the contract, full time employees, as well as day adjunct faculty. So um, we have uh, Paul Martland, our vice president for administration and finance, who is uh, at the table for the two years he's been in our full time employment, who can talk about the details of this contract. I would like to uh, thank the county for having Steve Gross in his former role and Damian. Um, Brady, his former role for having uh, been available to us for these six years um, while we were negotiating this contract and Langdon Chapman more recently for bringing this over the line. Um, we believe that this meets all of the negotiating uh, points, the goals that were important to the to the county and is a fair contract for all parties involved in all past the details. Thank you. Okay, thank you, President Young. Uh, just a brief amount of history just to Recall the contract has been under discussion for you know since before 2017. Uh, it was never it was never able to get the resolution, and an actual impasse was declared back in uh, 2019. And the expectation was that there would be a mediate a series of mediation sessions would be the next step in that process that would take place in 2020 and 21 if necessary. Uh, but with the arrival of COVID. Everything changed, uh, and the mediation process essentially came to a halt. To this day, has not really gotten back to where it might have been. Uh, but fortunately, over the last couple of years, we've had some other issues uh, that we've worked with the faculty association on, and it became apparent that it was worth giving us another try. That we collectively came to that agreement last fall, and. Uh, 
Commissioner Gross and Damien were on board as well that we, we ought to try it. Uh, what we agreed was that we would go back when when the uh, impasse was declared, there were eight issues that were listed in the formal letter. Uh, but we agreed that we could not get all eight of those done on a quick basis. But let's do the two big financial ones, which were health insurance, everybody contributing to health insurance, and a raises that fit in with the overall negotiating strategy of, of the county with the various units that, that the county is, is involved with. Uh, and so the timing worked out that we uh, we got off to a start on March 30th of this year, and we were able to resolve on those two big issues by May 11th. And subsequent to that, a uh, stipulation of agreement was put together, which I believe you've had access to see, um, summarizing the, the points of the contract. And uh, the union membership met, and they voted overwhelmingly in favor on June 4th, I believe the date was, was Saturday. And the following Tuesday, June 7th, our Board of Trustees of the college met, and they formally endorsed uh, approval as well. And a copy of that resolution uh, dropped off today uh, with the legislative staff so that you have that for your, for your record. Uh, highlights of the settlement, uh, as President Young said, a seven-year term starting 9117 and expiring at the end of August in 2024. And all members of the Faculty Association will be contributing to health insurance uh, retroactive to September 1 of 2021. Uh, the exact percentages vary depending upon uh, their higher dates. And if you recall, uh, there was a significant portion of this particular union that were not paying anything towards health insurance roughly 30 to 34 people. And that was about a third of the total membership. Uh, so it's, it's, it's gradual. We didn't, we didn't get them to the level where, where people have already been paying are at, but we crossed the threshold and got everybody paying. That group who hadn't been paying at all is now paying 3% in year one, three and a half percent in year two, 4% in year three. The, People who were already paying their amounts have gone up to 10% uh, roughly and going up by a half a percent each year. And where we all on, on you know, the administration and county side of things gain is on the percentages for new hires, which start off at 15% and go up to 16% uh, over, over three years. You know, that, that piece is in place. So, um, you know, it, it is it is a fairly wide gap, but on the other hand, everybody is paying in and time is on our side because the folks that are uh, paying lower levels are retiring, you know, in relatively short time frame, comparatively speaking, and the new employees coming on will be paying at the higher rate. So we felt that was appropriate. Um, the salary increases, again, we're looking at a seven year schedule. So going back to September 1st of each year, for 2017, it was zero. 2018, it was zero. 2019, it was zero. We went back to September 1 of 20 at 1.75% increase that year, which was in keeping with um, some of the other contracts that were in place. And then starting on September 1st of last year and then September 1st of this year, we're in and the following year uh, will be three and a quarter percent each of those years. So again, uh, in keeping with where other settlements that the county has negotiated have ended. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when I talk about the goals. Um, so the average annual value just with the salary increases is only 1.64%, but that wasn't going to get it done. And, uh, but we did negotiate a lump sum payment for full-time members of the association that doesn't go to their base salary, by the way, it's just a one-time payment of $6,000 per member that reflects the three years that they, they did not get anything. And when you do the math, the uh, lump sum adds about 1.16% to the average annual value. So the total average annual value of the contract is just approximately 2.8% per year which again is in keeping with where other other settlements uh, occurred. 
Um, and then the fourth thing we did was we agreed to continue active discussions to clarify and hopefully resolve a variety of open contract language issues during the remaining two years of this new contract. The thought being that if we can build on the, the spirit of collaboration that we've been managed to build in getting this settlement done, that perhaps we could attack some of these language issues in sort of an ad hoc basis, not trying to get them all at one time, but get one or two a semester where we, we make some progress and hopefully come to tentative agreements that we could just drop in to the contract when we actually get to that point of negotiating a couple of years from now. And uh, all parties were uh, pleased to make that agreement, which I thought was, was good. So just going back to what the goals were, again, all members needed to contribute to health insurance. That was a county must have as well as a college must have, and that was achieved. A technical issue about a cap. Uh, many of the contracts have caps on the year over year premium amount that members would be required to pay. The faculty association was the only one that had a hard dollar cap as opposed to a percentage cap. And we were successful in changing, changing that, so that was good. Uh, the average annual salary increases going forward should be in line with the other contracts and not set any new bars uh, that other unions could use in, in, in their strategy as, as new contracts are negotiated here shortly. Um, and that that was achieved, that three and a quarter percent that we ended up with the lab those last three years were in line with the CSEA uh, contract that was negotiated subsequently. Subsequent to when this one started to be negotiated, let's put it that way. Um, so I think we, we did a, a decent job there. Another goal was that any retroactive payments that we had to make either for salary or lump sums could not exceed the total dollar amount that the college had accrued over the years of the, of the negotiations. And we were able to achieve that. We had accrued roughly one point, just a scotch under 1.9 million. And the total cost actually came out slightly above that, uh, but a fairly minimal amount. And we can take that out of the college operating budget for this year without any without any problem. So we will uh, have achieved that goal. And all of the, I forgot to mention at the last meeting, but all of the increases that are proposed here have already been put into next year's budget and in our projections for the two years following. So we, covered going, going forward as well. So again, a uh, long process and uh, the county has been involved heavily. As President Young said, Steve Gross, Damian Brady were in from the beginning. And then with the changes of the county, Langdon Chapman has been involved in the, in the most recent <laughs> sets of discussions and they were all instrumental in getting this, getting this through. And the uh, negotiating team at the college was myself, and our Associate Vice President for HR, Iris Martinez Davis, and our VP for Academic Affairs, Erica Hackman. And Dr. Hackman has been involved since day one. And many of the contentious points on language issues were in the minutia of the academic side of the house. So she was the one who had to deal with that. And uh, she, uh, she earned her stripes going through that process, I, I can tell you. So it was a, definitely a, a team effort. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. And thank you for knowing that by rote and uh, repeating it again <laughs> for all of us who have had it. Uh, anyone who either had this presentation last uh, have any questions or, or hearing this for the first time? So pass the PNC. Yes. Yes. yes, it did pass the PNC. Excellent. Um, thank you very much. No uh, further questions. I'd ask for a, a vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, Nicole Anderson, Director of Community Development. May I have a uh, motion for uh, number A? Sorry. Second. Thank you. Ms. Anderson, you have the floor. Okay, so the first legislative request is to make an adjustment to the 2022 budget reporting actual 2022 entitlement allocation received 
which reflects an additional funding increase of 19,300. And 35. So every year we do our budget based off of an estimate from based on how the amount of funds we received the prior year from HUD. So this year we received 19,000 more dollars from HUD. So this is basically actualizing our revenue of federal funding. Pretty simple every year, right? Same thing. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll hold here. Aye. 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 Motion A passes. B, uh, request for adjustment of the 2021 estimated budget for record actual 2021 program income received, which reflects an additional funding increase of $16,635.48. Legislative request number 144. Our motion. So moved. Okay. So I see in Sutherland. So this is similar every year in our. In our budget, we estimate the program income that we're going to receive, and um, we accept we need to accept sixteen thousand more than we had actually estimated in our budget that we received in twenty twenty one. Questions? Carrying on, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number three: Request for supplemental appropriation to reconcile expenditures that had incurred prior to 2021, uh, 951,810 dollars. Legislative request number 138. Motion. So moved. Second. Yes, same Sorry. It's a negative. Okay, on. We'll work. You, you're on. You're on. I had you switch. I was on the other side. There we go. Okay, so this resolution is a little more complicated. So I wrote out as succinctly as possible uh, what this resolution is doing. Um, the auditors have been working to reconcile all, all of our funding, our budget rolls every year. So our, our revenue as well as expenditures roll every year. Um, so this resolution will reconcile the original disallowed expenditures that had incurred out of the community development fund prior to 2019. This would decrease the general fund balance and use surplus available in the general fund, but unbudgeted in the 2022 budget to reconcile the outstanding receivable in the community development fund with the general fund. So I think it's important to understand that these are not new expenditures or new money to be expended. Community developments, budget and expenditures roll, I explain that. Uh, this resolution will result in a number of journal entries. This is a cumulative amount over 20 plus years to satisfy the auditing process and reconcile what has already occurred between county taxation and HUD funds. This will memorialize the transfer of those funds to clean up the county and community developments finances. Long process. Okay. Yes. This is this is four years in the making. I know they were years. seven, but mm -hmm. <laughs> this is four years. <laughs> so similar to clean up we experienced uh at one of the longer sessions that we had. Yes. yes. Any questions? Hearing none. Um uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Next up. We have Amanda Dana, the tourism director for quarterly updates. I believe you have a presentation. I, I do. Okay. Um, also, a uh, presentation came out to you. Um, hopefully, you have this is just extra copies, but hopefully, you have the emails, or do you need extra copies? Um, the copies are always uh, fine. Okay. Do you need to yeah. plug in? For your um, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're uh, yeah. handling that right now. The, uh, okay. How much you have? I can pass it. Thank you. Thank you. I hear a delay. We'll be up shortly. Okay. Any uh, motion second? Motion. Oh, second. Thank you. So the one question I have, oh, here she comes. There it is. Right, now, right next to me. There you go. Hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'm going to go. I'll just give you a nudge. Here we go. 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Amy. Uh, happy to report that uh, in general, um, tourism is doing very well as far as visitors and money being spent in our communities. I'm going to start it off with the report um, talking through our occupancy tax. So our occupancy tax for first quarter is up 41% from 2021 which is a great year to compare. I never like to compare against 2020, as you guys know, but 2021 is fair to say it's a great year to um, compare that. Sales tax collection first quarter 2022 is up 16.6%. So that is a good indicator that um, people are staying here and spending money here, as well, which, which is music to my ears, I should say. So that's a good thing. I also want to start off by talking about a new hire in our office. Uh, Rachel Carr is our new tourism coordinator. She's right back here. Welcome. And um, she uh, she is a wonderful asset to us. And uh, she just came on a couple weeks ago and she already hit the court running. So um, we're looking forward to great things from her. Um, and no, I think you could advance that if you'd like. Okay. so. Um, I am going to start by two things. I'm going to start off with this. Um, remember back in the first quarter, we talked about um, expanding our distribution growth and, and going into different areas. We made a decision to do that. This is a result of some of the distribution strategies we put in place. Does anyone want to guess where that's taken, that picture? No, no guesses. Okay, well, it's not in our state. And it's not an airport, but it's actually in Delaware. So we reached uh, down to Delaware and uh, off of 95. Um, just by the bridge, and we uh, wanted to make sure that you guys knew that I went on investigation. I said, let me go and make sure that those guides are out there, and they are, so mission accomplished, and I just want to do that. I also want to do one more thing and uh, ask a trivia question, because it wouldn't be a good tourism report without one. Um, okay. Um, the oldest major American sporting event in this country, obviously American, is what? Horse racing. Hamilton. Okay, you, you got it, the Kentucky Derby, you win the prize. And if I had a prize, I'd give it to you. It is the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Most people say baseball, but, uh, it's, but it is the Kentucky Derby. You got that right. So we'll move forward from that. Okay, no more trivia, here we go, good stuff. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit today about some, some things that are great. Um, travel requirements, that's always a big topic. We're, on June 12th, we're listed. The pre-departure uh, testing was lifted coming into our country. That's a great thing. You're gonna see some um, many more visitors inbound. April 8th, Legoland was opened, um, and it's already uh, starting with a bang, it's doing great. Some new things at Legoland this summer, a new water playground and other, uh, other expansions there. And uh, they have a new shows and entertainment there as well. So looking forward to the summer with our partners in Legoland. I think I want to move it back. Okay, go back one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of the sectors that it's important to talk about is our sports tourism. Um, one project that we're working on in collaboration with Orange County Partnership and Steve Gross is a new indoor sports facility. Uh, they will talk more about that in their reports, but that's a very exciting thing. A very large sporting project is looking at Orange County to come here. Other sports facilities are doing incredibly well, um, incredibly well by bringing in thousands of visitors here and trying to stay in our hotels. Um, I say trying because we're booked, folks. We're absolutely booked, and we'll talk more about that. But largely the weekends is these sports tournament and these athletes are in town with their families in Orange County. Okay, now I'll go to the slide. Okay, one exciting project we're working on is uh, the Milk Factory. That is another um, Michael Dork project who you might recognize that name from City Winery, Hudson Valley in Montgomery. Um, we have been talking with his staff and went for a tour last week. Actually, Rachel and I went for a tour last week and we wanted to see what was going on there. And that's what's going on there. It's, it, it is the Borden's um, condensed milk factory that is being transformed into the milk factory, which will be a spa and hotel and a bed space and a winery. So it's a, it's a great project. We're looking forward to seeing that. They are applying for uh, the consolidated funding application, trying to get some uh, dollars to the state. So hopefully that'll work out. They're also uh, up against the rail trail. So it's really a great project and we're looking forward to future things. Um, as we all know what City Winery looks like now in Montgomery and, and what he and his team has done. To I always thought that was Ulster. Is that just on the border then? It, it is. It is the last parcel. Last parcel before, before Ulster. Is town of Montgomery? It is town of Montgomery. Yeah. Yes. So good things. Other, um, other projects we're working on, uh, expansion at Angry Orchard. Um, we're waiting for uh, Lemoncello's Orange Inn to open up. 
Um, we are exploring new locations for the Dinosaur Park, <laughs> expansions at Torrance Stone Community Arts Center, and foster hospitality. We're very excited about that project in the city of Newburgh as well. So I think it's important to talk a little bit about hotels. Um, I, I've been shouting it from the rooftops that we, we do need more rooms. I mentioned in the last report um, that when comparing ourselves to Polk County, which is where Legoland is in Florida, they have about 8,000 units and we have 3,500. So we really need to catch up and uh, it's forecasted that we will be even uh, a stronger performing park uh, in Legoland uh, than it is in Polk County. So we really need to, that and other reasons, expand our hotel rooms. So this is just a good snapshot of where they all are. And um, as you can see, it's pretty well rounded around the county. Uh, we have 19 projects that we are, are looking at right now that are either in planning or under construction. And a couple of good news, good things are going on. The front um, hotel, boutique hotel and rooftop bar in Port Jervis, that's ex uh, expected to open in the fall. And the Orange Inn in Goshen will be opening up their hotel rooms uh, in this, this summer. So we're excited to see that. Okay, I'll go further. Okay, so let's go right into some of the marketing activities we've been doing. Um, New York Stewart International, as you, if you had your hands over your ears, you would have known this, but Play Airline is in Stewart now, New York Stewart International. That is our international carrier that will bring us to Iceland and to uh, 22 other European destinations. It's a fantastic partner. So what did we do? We capitalized on Play and their efforts to talk with journalists and influencers. So we basically work with them and we had influencers in the area and we put them in places all over the Hudson Valley, a lot in Orange County. And we um, gave them an opportunity to experience us instead of getting on that bus. And what do I mean by getting on that bus? Uh, a coach bus will pull up to the, to the uh, airport and you see lots of people getting on that bus and leaving here. So we're like, well, give us a chance. Give us a chance to show them what's going on in the Hudson Valley, in Orange County, so that they make this their place to stay and day trip into the city. And so hopefully we were successful, but it was, was pretty neat taking them all out. Here's some pictures of us out. And uh, on the top there, that's uh, Anna, and she's the head of marketing, and, Hutt and uh, Nadine is head of public relations. Both of them were TV, uh, TV personalities in Iceland. So it's great to spend some time with them. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about this next project. It's Band Wango, and that is our platform for a new craft beverage trail program that we're going to be launching this summer. We did some fun little uh, branding, as you can see there, uh, Keep on Sipping in OCNY, and Sipping Pretty in OCNY. We, uh, we're going to be branding that, and that's going to be our new fun way to get us through all our 29 craft beverage locations in the county. We're pretty excited about that, but we partnered up with a company called Band Wango. More to come on that, but it's going to be an initiative for this summer. Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about marketing and our digital statistics. Our, our Google AdWord and our digital display advertising is doing very well. Um, as you can see, some, some of the highlights on here, it's, it's people are really coming to our site. We're judging it by how they're coming to our site. We're also judging by how much time they spend on our site. I want to bring your attention to one thing. The 12.18 click through rate is the highest, I, definitely the highest in the region, um, if not putting up against some of the state stats. Normally, a 1% is average for the industry to, for people to come on your site and click through and go to other parts of your website. We're at 12%, so something's going right. So we're very happy about that. We just want to make sure you saw that. The 25% uh, conversion rate for our lodging is very strong too. That, that's normally much less, like 10% or something. So some of our most popular spots on our website, events, as you can imagine. Um, some of our more popular ones uh, over the last month or so, um, Pine Bush uh, UFO Festival, Car Show, Food Festivals, Family Fun, Downtown Farmers Markets, Lodging and Arts and Culture. So those are our top uh, sites on our website. Okay, so we have to transition into social media because that's really big for us. As you can see, we have really increased our profile for social media. We started in late 2020 doing daily posts in three different mediums, and that's the success we see from that. 160% increase in Instagram, 119% increase in Facebook, 38% in Twitter. And now that I have your attention, this, are, it, this is the handles that we use. And I like to say, follow, like, share, repeat. This is the ones you're gonna do. You're gonna go on and follow us. You're gonna like it and you're gonna share it. And that's our social media handles. Often we get asked this question, what are your handles? Here they are. And everyone in this room should be having them on their social media so we can get more followers. 
Okay, so we're going to transition to public relations. Public relations is a really big part of what we do in tourism, and we have a lot of partners in, in public relations. You, Brand USA, I Love New York, Hudson Valley Magazine, we are constantly working with them to make sure that we push out our content. And so really good partners, our relationships are, are stellar. I also want to give a shout out to our destinations. Okay, that's okay, Nora. I'm just a little excited here. Um, our, our destinations, which were on the last slide, um, we partner with our destinations in Orange County. West Point, we've been working with them to do some collaborations, especially in public relations. Woodbury Common, Legoland, it benefits us to partner with them. So that's one thing I just want to make sure you guys know that. Okay, Nora, here we go. Okay, so one last thing I'd like to mention is that we are eventful. Um, we we are so happy that events are so uh, prevalent in Orange County. Here's just an example of a couple of events that um, we have coming up. Freedom Fest is coming up in July, and the Great American Weekend is coming back to Goshen, and that is going to be July 4th weekend, and of course, racing, which is really important. And um, we're all excited about that. We're part of those committees to make sure those events are successful. Okay, Nora, where are we going? Okay, this is one thing I want to let you know is that uh, yesterday on Father's Day, uh, I was at the Great Race in Montgomery, and that was fantastic. The Great Race is a race that Montgomery worked very hard to get as a stop. They started in uh, Rhode Island, and they are continuing all the way through to North Dakota, and they came through Montgomery, and as you can see from the pictures from yesterday, it was largely attended. It was a great event, and we hope to keep that for many years to come. Okay, getting through this, guys. I know, someone's looking at their watch. Um, we're going to go right into film, which is incredibly exciting, but only a few things to tell you about film. So, um, as you know, film, just broad strokes, job creation, economic development, growing the economy, leaps and bounds. We'll move off the slide. It's one of our staples that we use. So, has anyone heard of Poker Face? I think you all have because they're all over this county. Um, it's, it, it's a big film from Universal, Peacock, and uh, they're all over this county. What a great thing of this film is, is that they're here for 10 months. That's like what you hope to achieve. They're here for 10 months. They're, they've anchored themselves in Newburgh with the sound stages, and they're all over. They're all over Middletown, Chester, Tuxedo, Newburgh, Montgomery. And they're all over. We'll talk a little more about that in a second. Um, but we just wanted to make sure you saw this other real good uh, production called Theater Camp. Um, and this is um, this is from the same producers as La La Land and Divergent and Twilight. So there are some real great actors in the area for this one. Uh, and it's in Warwick at Kutz Camp. All right, let's move. Okay, so has anyone heard of this restaurant impossible on yes. the Food Network? Yeah. Okay, here we go tomorrow in Middletown and uh, Franco de Roma's uh, restaurant there. They will be uh, highlighting that project. We're pretty excited that happened and uh, looking forward to seeing that. And there's one more. Com yep, yeah, another car commercial that's coming up uh, this week. The is it the Rivian or Rivian electric truck company? I believe it's called their um, uh, does anyone recognize that place up on the right there? Where yes. that's one of the most famous car commercial places you could think of. Um, it's a great ride. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. What would you want to show? Nora, something to say? I'm sorry, Nora. <laughs> you can speak. Speak up, girl. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so we're going to move past the side and um, go into something else. Okay, here you go, folks. This is hot off the press. This is uh, Pretty Little Liars. Uh, they have agreed to start filming in Orange County starting at the end of this year, and that is a huge win for us. So um, they will be here, and they will be here for a while. So um, it's a it's a great thing. And um, other other company, other production companies are here: Prime, Marvel, Apple TV. We put Marvel there, owned by Disney, because we worked really hard to get them here. They were looking for a hundred thousand square foot film production studio. We could not deliver it. They left. So I put it up there for a reason. We almost had that guy, um, but we certainly do need more sound stages. And um, they they did leave, but they will come back. They were very impressed by all of us. So, and uh, Nora and I attended a film conference in Albany, uh, meeting with our, our collaborating with the state on on different trends in filming, and uh, we we got a lot of good uh, good interaction, and we learned a lot from this conference that we went to. Real quick question mm -hmm. I have on the sound stages. Um, obviously, there's a need for them. Um, are our local municipalities 
they had the capacity and, and wherewithal to handle it. In other words, we helped one municipality walk through it, the yeah. process. Right. Um, are we doing the same with others? We are doing the same with others if they want it. Um, that's the whole thing. That what, what I should say is this, is that a film production studio is just like another business. It's no different. If you have a commercial application, a warehouse that's already industrially zoned or commercially zoned, there really isn't that much different. It's just a matter of making that actual property ready for, for sound stages. You know, soundproofing the walls, um, putting other amenities in them. You can repurpose that warehouse on day two if you didn't want to film there as, as a warehouse or distribution center. But, but um, filming is high tech positions. It's, it's high skilled positions. It's, it's, it's a great industry and I will help encourage any municipality would like to put their toes in the water to try to get some of their properties going on this. Thank you for a minute. Chairman, I, that's that for them saying um, one of the yes, things please. that we'd like to also let the community know is that the planning department is looking at some model plan, plans to uh, roll out to municipalities and zoning so planning boards that are interested in this. So we're looking to standardize some uh, modelized plans that we can use for other interesting municipalities. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, that's why we all work together. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so um, we were on location poker face. You mentioned they were all around the county. Does anyone guess some of these locations on that screen? You might get a cookie if you can guess all of them, but I'm not quite sure. But this this is just <laughs> this is just saying they are all over the county. Nora, where are these locations? The top left is the city of Newburgh. Uh, the middle right there, that's Tuxedo, around Tuxedo Motel. Uh, going over, that is going to be Anthony's Pier 9. And then coming back around where you see that burnt out trailer, that is uh, Orange County Hops. That's the, the land that's like right behind it. Is that Nair Street? Yeah. And then if you come down below that picture, that one is the town of Newburgh. That is in uh, around Overlook Drive. And then where Base Camp is, they actually filmed in Highland Falls, uh, very close to uh, West Point. Uh, they filmed at two locations there at their bridge in, I believe, in Fireside. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were there for like the whole day and the municipality was really great in helping the production get the parking and whatever they needed. Thank you. Okay. So we talked about theater camp, but just to let you know that, you know, we are really happy that they decided to have work as their home. Um, they've been using local vendors and um, there was a, a an article in the Warwick Examiner relative to the income and the revenue that film brings to their municipality to point that out. And does anyone know where this is? On Bush. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this that? is on 52. Yeah. And this is the converted Orange County hops. Um, so just so you know, when film companies come in, it, it's not like a traveling circus or anything. They actually come in and make improvements to places. Uh, they actually ended up putting down a $30,000 patio for this uh, entity and this property, and they're leaving it, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were there for a full two weeks filming there. So it was great. It was wonderful to see. Everyone thought, oh, darn construction, but no, it was actually filming that was going on there. Um, but uh, they really benefited from being in that in that series. So. Excellent brisket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about the Below the Line boot camp. Another one is starting in July. This really gets um, students and people into the filming industry who might not know if they really want to be in filming, but they go there, they get some great skills, and they start working immediately. It's 100% job placement once they go to these boot camps. Um, and this is one of the teachers we have there um, who's been working with our students. And we have another boot camp in July that's going to start. Um, we don't have an exact date, but we will have it shortly. And uh, that class, my guess, will be full. And they'll be working shortly after that. I'm thrilled to have these types of programs and the output that they're having. So does anyone have any questions on tourism or film that I can answer? I know we're <laughs> short for time. Let's yes. let's ask it. Yeah, real quick, Amanda. Um Unbush also has First Fridays, which is a great event. So the first Friday of every month, uh, there's live music, there's vendors, uh, it's very good. So I, I wander over, of course, because I live there. Um, it came up, I was talking to some folks from New York City, and I know this has come up before. I mentioned it to Steve Gross. Steve came over, was kind enough to kind of take a tour of the area. Um, a lot, you know, it's not me, it's because I'm too old, but people have apps on their phone 
to show where there are electric charging stations. Mm -hmm. Totally foreign to me. Um, if you're born after 19, before 1970, it's, uh, so we don't have many charging stations in Orange County, unless you go to the back of Garnet Health Center where the doctors will have Teslas. There's a bunch back, there's a bank of them. I know that um, Cosmos and Newburgh has them, Middletown has them, Quick Checks, a couple of them have them. Do we have any mechanism? Do we have anything? I don't know if it would be for your department or for Steve Rose, or Bill is here, Maureen is here, but that seems to be, and I talked to them, I mean, I got an education that they go on their phone and they specifically look for rapid charging stations. So, rapid, so that draws them, why would they go to Pine Bush? Well, we're in the furthest most corner of Orange County, but they do come to the UFO Museum. They do come for some of the eateries there. Uh, they'll come to the UFO Fest, but they'll look and see. So even if we have them here, if they're coming for Great American Weekend, is there any movement to put some charging stations throughout Orange County to enhance tourism? So uh, the answer is, first and foremost, there's a very hot topic right now, no pun intended. The electric charging stations are something we have to work with. We absolutely want, it's not like we might want to put our toes in the water. We to. absolutely yeah. have to do it. And um, it's something that's being talked from a regional perspective and a statewide perspective. And yes, it involves tourism, it involves economic development, it involves planning. And so, yes, we absolutely have to be in it. Do I, we haven't did any initiatives as a tourism department, but we will gladly be involved because it's something we very much feel is important. So, so it's on the radar. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, so I, I, think, I think the ask, if I heard this correctly, the ask is that we promote or have something to help promote where these locations are for tourism, but also to have it on the books as far as getting projects out there. And I, I can tell you, as former chair of the Green Committee, and working with planning and we had that promotion and push from the state for charging stations now we did set that up and that's happening within some county facilities uh, but as an overall regional type thing that is something that should be happening and obviously funding is going to be needed right and i believe our our whole teams will be collaborating with it i mean i know it's on steve gross to talk a little bit about that as well but our planning department you know Really should be on. Thank you. I'd like to look, recognize legislative change. Please. Yeah, uh, I believe they're still available. The PEC has grants for charging stations that municipalities can get and uh, install. Village Warwick has two double board stations, um, and there's another one out in the town, which I'm maybe not working at the, at the present time. So, um, you know, you have to apply. You have, you know, have to get it awarded, and then. Uh, um, you know, it, it, it pretty much comes 75% funded, including if you want to make the charging station free uh, for a user for a period of time in order to just kind of get it introduced and get people used to using it, um, you can also um, include that as part of the grant funding. So the electrical costs over the first couple of years can be included as well. So I think. You know, it's a two-pronged approach. I think we need to convince the local municipalities of the importance of it through economic development and tourism, and you know, point out that that they can get it, get these uh, get these grants, and and install these devices. That was DEC. Yes. Yeah. You know if they're rapid charges? Um, bless you. They're not as rapid as the Tesla's like, but they are um, a step above. The base. It's like three different phases, right? Around. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and I know some of the electric cars are actually offering like that first year or two free on, um, on this. It's one of the three stages that they have for the electric. Right, ours are second stage. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to bring this back to topic here. Um, so for any of the municipalities that are online watching this, you want your municipality to be on the map. You need a charging station. You should look for the grants. I can send out any information out to that. Oh, yeah, and we should probably go through the association of towns with that as well uh, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, you know, to get yeah. the message out. So okay. I thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Comments? Thank you very much thank for your you. presentation. <clears throat> Next up, Steve Gross, Director of Economic Development. Uh, request is authorized county executive introduction with the Office of Economic Development to submit an application to New York State Development for strategic planning and feasibility study grant program in the amount of $100,000. The 
request is authorized a county executive in conjunction with the Office of Economic Development to comply with the requirements of Article 15A of the New York State Executive Law. Participation by minority-owned businesses, enterprises, NW, excuse me, MBE, women-owned businesses, WBE, participation. If awarded, grant funds will be used to conduct a feasibility study to assess various sites around the county for the development of a convention slash civic center. This is legislative request 141. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Sassy and Stenanga. Did I get that right? <laughs> Sir, you have the floor. Mr. Thank you, Chairman. So we just heard all the great things going on in the county in the world of tourism. There's a lot going on. There's a lot more that's going to be happening. And that's why we want to talk to you today. So the consolidated funding application uh, is $225 million of grants and tax credits uh, provided by Empire State Development. We are very fortunate in the room today to actually have the co-chair of the Regional Council, Dr. Young, by me, I believe, and Maureen, who serves on the Regional Council, Maureen Hallahan. So thank you both for being here and for being partners. Um, so the reason we're here today is we want to talk to you about conducting a feasibility study or a conference center civic center in the county. The deadline for the CFA is June 29th at four o'clock in order to submit an July. application. Excuse me, July. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Half a month. The reason we first. Uh, there you go, Mr. Lassie. The, the reason we're here today is because we need an accompanying uh, resolution to go along with it from the municipality. So in order to make that deadline for the full legislature, we had to have it on committee today. Um, so, you know, we're requesting the funds for the CFA, CFA to do a feasibility study uh, related to all the progress we've had in the county over the last couple of years. We've all seen the development Legoland's brought to us, uh, all the positive uh, impacts of the 29 breweries, craft breweries, as uh, Amanda mentioned before. Um, and we have a great economic development team in the county. The whole team's here today. It's great to have the whole room, group uh, in the room together. We've got Maureen, Bill, Dr. Young, Amanda, uh, Heather from the chamber is also part of that team. Uh, and what we want to do is really see if a convention center, which we all believe will work in Orange County and is prime time for it, uh, will will actually meet the metrics that are needed to do so. Uh, so for, in order for the partnership to really promote and attract uh, the ability to retain a convention civic center, they need to make sure they have the ability to sustain it in the county. And that's what this feasibility study is gonna do. Make sure we have the critical mass, make sure we have the infrastructure, which we already know we do. We have the highways, we have the water sewer, we have a lot of things in place. Um, so we really wanna use this to promote the county. We've all been to events throughout the state. I think you mentioned before, Mr. Minuta, the Association of Towns and Villages, never held in the Hudson Valley, never mm -hmm. held in Orange County because there's no place to hold it in Orange County. Same thing with the New York State Association of Counties. Uh, we all end up going to the Desmond and Albany for these big events. Again, we'd love to have people come see Orange County and come down here, but the closest thing we had was Anthony's Pier 9. That's now not a catering hall anymore. We're very happy that it's operating as a film production studio, which is incredible, but we don't have that facility in Orange County anymore. We've got some other facilities, but nothing that can handle large groups of people uh, for these kind of events. So, you know, in my mind, I have visions of New York Auto Show kind of event, tech shows, Comic-Con Orange, who knows? We have a lot of opportunities <laughs> for these kind of things coming to Orange County. We have an international airport, as Amanda said, flying to Iceland, flying to destinations all across the country. There's a lot to do here. There's a lot going on here. 60 miles from the city, we have all the highways, we have the infrastructure in place. There's no better time than now for a convention center. Uh, so that's the, the concept here. We are gonna propose uh, four locations for the uh, feasibility study. Uh, we are very cognizant that if I ask 21 legislators, I'm going to get 22 locations, <laughs> if not more. Uh, so what we did was we, as a group, sat and chatted about it. What are the most strategic locations of the county to do this feasibility study? And four locations popped up. Uh, near the Woodbury Common, obviously lots of traffic. Stewart Airport, lots going on at the airport, obviously international domestic travel. The city of Newburgh has a lot of opportunities. So we're thinking the city of Newburgh down by the waterfront. And the last uh, site for the feasibility study will be the Orange County Fairgrounds in the town of Wallkill. That site's been uh, long uh, tied to recreation and events, and we'd like to see it continue in that realm going forward. So this is really what the ask is for right now. Uh, it's a $100,000 grant. Out of the 100,000, it's a 50% match, but of the 50%, we're required to put 10,000 in cash, 10% cash. The other part of the 50% can be within kind services, uh, which is our plan. 
So that is what we're asking the legislature. We'd like to apply for this grant. We think Orange County is in prime position for a convention civic center. We'd like to see it land somewhere in the county. Uh, we think it will be a major economic driver for uh, not only tourism, but spin-off activities that happen with restaurants and all that other good stuff when people come to the county and they spend their money here and help keep our taxes down. Uh, and that's why we're here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions? About Camp LaGuardia? So we've had some discussions about Camp LaGuardia. You know, the county exec presented uh, his speech a couple weeks ago about a, a park project for Camp LaGuardia. At this point, we feel these are the four sites to look at it for right now. It is the city of Newburgh and Stewart Airport. It is the Woodbury Common and the Orange County Fairgrounds. How much land do you need for what you're proposing? Well, the fairgrounds property is approximately 100 acres all in. Um, so we're kicking around somewhere 50 to 100 acres. We've sit down by the waterfront for the city of Newburgh. I can't There's imagine. a lot of, again, feasibility aspects, yeah. right? So it's, can it sustain it? Is there the room for it? That's why we want to do the study. Make sure that there's there's a big track of land on the hill yeah. up from the waterfront. So all these things that the feasibility study is going to help us determine. Let's say a change. Yes, thank you. Um, you looking down the road at a public private venture ownership, uh, private venture ownership? What's the first thing we want to do is make sure that we can sustain it and expose the project uh, as far as the ability to do it. So I think what would happen next is once we get the feasibility study act, it says three of the four sites are going to be That would go over to Maureen at the partnership. Maureen would help to market and attract uh, public, private. We're not sure yet. We don't have that answer. Very big one. We can't even get a seat at the table unless we can prove to them right. that we have a feasible location. Yes, yeah. so a, fe a feasible location and, uh, and the a marketing plan that shows it. it'll work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But and just even in general, you, at, at, at this point, it could go either way. I mean, there could be some journey of a thousand okay. miles. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Really where we're at. We need to take that first step to make sure we can do it and to get the ball rolling down the hill. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Ramos. Yeah. So can you speak more to the actual feasibility study? What does that look like? And do you have a timeline on that, et cetera, et cetera? So first thing we're going to do is apply for the grant. Mm -hmm. The grant process takes some time. Sure. So once they go through the grant process, we will, uh, you know, this is just putting this on the agenda has spurred some discussion, right, about other mm -hmm. potential funding avenues. So we are looking at other things because this is something that while we are supportive and want it to move forward could take a little bit of time and we don't necessarily want to wait six months to a year sure. to get the funds to then do an rfp to go through the whole process before you know it it would be six months to a year before you even started so there are a lot of other discussions that are going on as a result of this conversation today thank you so i have a question yes sir. uh two actually so one the feasibility study is going to look to see whether this idea of the convention center is even needed in this area. And then number two is to identify the site. Uh, we've identified it for, we have identified four sites. Excuse me. The so, so part of one of those sites. Correct. Okay. So we're looking at demographics of the area. Can we support a convention center, et cetera, and then looking at the locations. Highways, water, sewer, you know, all the things that are going to be necessary to use build it in the first place, right? Absolutely. Uh, the other question that I had is the, Tell me a little bit about 50% match. Now, I understand it's a $100,000 grant. I understand $10,000 of it is cash from the county, but the 50%, I did not quite So it's a 50% match, right? We get $100,000, we have to provide 50. Of the 50, 10 is cash. Okay. So the other 40 is in-kind services. Part, part salaries, part uh, DPW might end up doing some work to support it or planning department could provide some statistical analysis that might have to support uh, the feasibility study, those kind of uh, kind of services. That clarifies it for me. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. That's a great idea. That being said, um, roll, uh, we're going to need a roll call. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And uh, item number two, monthly update. Um, motion to second, please. So moved. Um, <laughs> All right, got you. It's the thing you're almost on that. All right, I know you have a busy agenda. I'm going to try to be brief because I know there's other things on the calendar. Legislative okay. Cassie mentioned before, uh, I'm continuing my municipal outreach to all the communities in our county. I've sat down with the town of Crawford and Legislator Sassy last week, uh, Charlie Carnes as well, supervisor. 
A lot going on in Crawford. Uh, not only the UFO Museum bringing people to town, but expansion of water and sewer out past uh, McDonald's, out 52, to try to uh, you know uh, promote additional commercial development, uh, which is really good for uh, the Crawford area, as well as some uh, great open space initiatives and uh, great recreational opportunities there. So Crawford's doing well. I met today, actually, with uh, George Serrano and Town of Wallkill, lots going on there. Uh, Amanda talked about the need for hotels, two or three more hotels being built in Wallkill, Hannaford Shopping Center, you know, Steel's all up, ready to open by the end of the year, they're saying. Adams, 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 Adams excuse Adams. me, Adams. I had to drive by Hannaford to get there. I had to drive by there to get there. There you go. Uh, so lots of stuff going on in Wallkill, just like the rest of the county and the fairgrounds, you know, a lot of potential there as well. Uh, Gateway Project in Montgomery, We're working with uh, Brian Fitzpatrick and Steve Brescia, they're trying to really uh, open up the corridor into Montgomery by the airport there. The county owns a piece of the property. There's some local developers really want to make it a new entrance way into Montgomery as you drive in past the airport, uh, a whole new image for the village of Montgomery, which we feel is really well deserved. Um, I spoke in front of the Minnesota Valley Kiwanis last week, really good group of people trying to just get out there to the communities. What are the interests of local grassroots and bringing that back as well. I spoke in front of the New Windsor Planning Board regarding the soundstage a couple weeks ago in support of it. We all believe this is a great project for the county and Film and Arts is really bringing in uh, you know, a lot of money to the community. There's a lot of offshoot, as uh, Amanda was saying, when they go out and they build these sets, they're spending a lot of money at the local hardware stores to build a set for a couple months and tear it down. And that's all good sales tax for us. Um, the um, Chamber of Commerce is having their monthly breakfast next week. I will be a panelist on one of their events. And then the other thing I would really want to mention is the Economic Summit. The County Exec mentioned it in the State of the County Address. I wanted to mention it to you last month, but I didn't want to trump the County Exec with his own announcement. Uh, so this is a, a major thing I'm going to be working on. Uh, the college is working on it with me, Dr. Young. Maureen's working on it with me as a co-chair, as well as Alan Sorensen. Uh, we really feel this is a great opportunity for uh, bringing in all our community leaders, our municipal leaders, our community organizations, business community to discuss all the current and future concerns related to economic development in the county. There's a lot out there. It's not just your basic infrastructure things as I've talked to in the past with water, sewer, roads and bridges. It's modern infrastructure, it's housing, it's childcare. It's a lot of, it's broadband communications, it's energy. These things have all really changed over the years. Um, but we're looking at other issues, understanding economic incentives. Maureen and Bill do a great job. Uh, with Empire State Development, we have the foreign trade zone. We're going to look at workforce issues in the county. Uh, as I mentioned, child care, retaining workers, finding workers. Agriculture is huge, uh, not just dealing with the cannabis industry, but also with hydroponic produce that's being grown in the county these days. Uh, and working with governments, another major area of the county. We want to uh, do more with helping the business community work together with the government. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be putting together is a series of videos. You'll be seeing one in the next week or so with the health department explaining what, you know, you're interested in opening up a restaurant. Do you know what you need to do to do that? Do you know what permits or uh, requirements are necessary at the health department? So we're going to be putting together some real short tidbits, YouTube videos, three to five minutes, kind of make it easy for you to understand bite-sized government, right? Uh, aside from that, there's been a lot going on with respect to leads. And Maureen's going to do most of the talking. I don't want to bounce on to too many of these topics because they do overlap all of our agencies. Dino Park, we're definitely looking to land that in the county. We got another lead uh, through the county website for another major hotel lodge in Warwick, another uh, exciting project. Indoor sports facility, uh, Amanda alluded to it before, but we have a very, very substantial project that might be coming to the county. Somebody interested in building one of the largest indoor sporting facilities in the Northeast. And this would be a tremendous economic boom. This The sports tourism world is another piece of the puzzle that has just taken off. And, Middletown with the big track at Fuller Field. Uh, these things are really bringing in people, filling up hotels and restaurants on the weekend. So we like that as well. Another thing, very interesting, I, I'm uh, acquainted with Aziz Ahmed. He's a, a local businessman. He is tied to the Consul General of Bangladesh. Very good friends. We will be meeting in two weeks to see if there's any interaction with airlines at Stewart and trying to bring an airline to the Far East. So very interesting things that we have going on. Uh, with that, I'm going to end because there's a lot to talk about, but I know you have a big agenda and we can read a little time. I appreciate your brevity. Thank right. you. All right. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you. Next up, Maureen Hallahan.
actually uh, Bill Fearbunty has an issue and uh, he asked that he could jump ahead of me. So that's up to you. That's up to you. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> promise to be brief. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not good. I'm going to pass. Some water in there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fiavaranti. Thank you. So, uh, Thank you, Thank motion you. second for Mr. Fiavaranti for his monthly update. Any ideas? Yeah. One, two, got it. All right, thank you for working with me. Uh, it's been an afternoon. My car wouldn't start, so I had to take my wife's car to go get my wife's car or have her come get me. Let's show a movie like that. Come on. She has a funeral mm -hmm. to go to, so I, I'm going to move kind of quickly here. Okay. So, and apologize, my suit coat is also in that car, so I apologize. <laughs> for so I'm still better dressed than legislative Peggio. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> I can say about Paul, I wouldn't pick on him. So, all right, let me go. Uh, all right, quick, first of all, meeting schedule for the IDA. We just had our board meeting last week. June 29th, we're having our governance committee meeting. We'll be reviewing the respondents uh, to our uh, bond council RFP. So that's important then. Finance committee is on July 12th, and our next board of directors meeting is July 20th. Uh, I, uh, I want to talk about our I IDA activity since the beginning of the year. It's been a very, very busy year. Uh, after going 14 months without any applications and kind of being radioactive, it seemed like, we've been very, very busy. We've already to date approved incentives for Walgreens for their uh, pharmaceutical microfilament center, 200 jobs, town of Newburgh, approved a pilot and sales tax exemption for Sativa, another 100 jobs, town of Warwick. Uh, and the board just last week approved um, incentives for three battery backup or battery storage uh, projects. I talked about that briefly in two in the town of Warwick, one in the village of Warwick. Um, uh, they were uh, each is a 7.7 .7 million dollar uh, project. Uh, in, in addition to adding resiliency to the network and having, helping New York State achieve its its aggressive goals uh, for renewable energy, uh, the Warwick School District will get uh, new revenue of about 2.2 million dollars over the term of, of our agreements with them, um, as will uh, a private entity in, in the village. Uh, so we've approved those already, and we have a full slate still before us. Royal Line, the board just approved uh, authorization of a public hearing uh, for uh, benefits for the projects slated for Village of, of Goshen, 17M, the former Kicker Frost Brewery site. Uh, they would, cons Royal Line would consolidate uh, their locations in two in New Jersey, one in Marlboro, actually, just over the border in Ulster, and bring them to the Village of Goshen. Exciting project. 65 new jobs and more to come after that. They're a tremendous company. So uh, a public hearing for that project will likely be June 29th, it looks like we're waiting for. I also reported in Mount St. Mary College, they applied for tax-free bonds. That's currently on hold right now there because of the rate change and such, they're looking to see if it still makes sense for them. But we all have a strong pipeline of other projects. The partnership is, we've had a lot of meetings and a lot of handoffs from them. Steve Gross as well, he's brought a few leads. So we do have a strong pipeline. We expect to be busy for, for several months going forward. Quick accelerator update. At the end of this month, end of June will be the expiration of our last lease in New Windsor. So we'll actually be done. We've transitioned other tenants out of there, out of those spaces. One looks appears to be staying, the one whose lease expires at the end of this month, Seco Silkscreen. Seems like they've uh, worked something out with the town. We tried to you know, help that the best we could, position them best, but we will be have our hands clean of New, New Windsor Accelerator. We're done in the city of Newburgh. In Middletown, our lease expires on November 25th. We'll be done in Middletown after that. All we'll be operating from this point forward will be the Warwick Accelerator, mostly because it is not a tremendous drain financially on the IDA the way the others are. We pay no rent. I think it's a dollar for the entire term of our lease of the, the manor house on the Warwick uh, <clears throat> former prison site property. We have three tenants. The board just approved renewal of their leases for another year. And we have one really great success story at the Warwick Accelerated Scripted Fragrance or Candle Manufacturer. They've had a, a number of big bumps because of natural exposure. They're growing tremendously. They actually renewed their lease and just rented the final two spaces that are in that manor house. So it's costing us very little. It's full, successful company. So we're going to keep it going. Quick question. Sure. So if we're vacating New Windsor or Middletown, I assume where 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 are you being housed? New Windsor is no longer going to be located. So New Windsor. I, Thanks for, for asking for that, because I'll clarify, not in our location, our, which is at the, kind of the top of the hill, Fort Crotty Lane is right. our headquarters. This is down the hill in the former barracks, I believe they all are. Yes. Um, and uh, they're buildings that uh, next to Storm King construction, right, 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 right. you know, right. so it's those buildings. So we'll be out of there. 
our lease for the headquarters expires in February of 23. So that's coming up and the board has been very uh, vocal about us coming back to Goshen. The board seems to want that. Uh, the kind of executive has mentioned that before. Other partners of ours have felt that it would be better if we'd be here. So that's where we're going to be looking, it looks like. Uh, again, uh, February timeframe. Until then, we'll be remaining at the headquarters at uh, just across from Empire State Development in, in New Windsor. Thanks for the clarification. Sure. Please continue. Okay, uh, just recent RFPs. Uh, I may have announced this last month, but the uh, we have a local labor policy requiring that at least 85% of construction labor on incentive, IDA incentivized projects uh, have to be local, meaning from the local seven counties. We couldn't possibly provide that much labor just in Orange County. Uh, we have a monitoring company that goes on site, looks at driver licenses, everything to make sure that they're in compliance. We put an RFP out for that. We just named two local firms to take over that work, Felons or Engineering and land as an architecture and engineering firm based in Goshen. Uh, the board did want to make that more local, a firm based in Rochester, who has expertise in this area. They were doing it for years. They're going to be, when they complete their projects, these two new firms will be handling new IDA projects for us. I mentioned bond counsel. We have general counsel, our attorney, Susan Katzoff. Um, she's been with us, gosh, for a good six months now. Bond counsel will be for bond deals. Right now, that's being handled by Harris Beach. Harris Beach is one of the respondents to that RFP. We have three others. Um, and again, the board will be reviewing those on June 29th. So we'll be making a decision there. Uh, at the last week in June, we'll be issuing an RFP for marketing PR work. Looking forward to, to that. Uh, we have a lot of education of the public to do, not to mention uh, marketing for our, our incentives and such. Uh, and then we did a shovel ready site analysis uh, request for qualifications. We received five proposals for that. Next month, the governance committee will be reviewing uh, options that I'll present to them for that. Uh, and then lastly, just some recent meetings. Uh, I did attend the New York State EDC annual meeting in Cooperstown. I went to that last year and the first breakout session I went to was a uh, was about good governance and it was a case study using the Orange County IDA for what could go wrong. So uh, I was in the back of the room with, with the, the glasses and fake mustache. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but this year was very different, had a lot of compliments. First of all, on, on hiring our general counsel, Sue Katzoff. She has a tre tremendous reputation. I got a ton of compliments on that. You have interacted with her in this committee, and I, I got a lot of compliments from this, this uh, committee in the legislature as well. Um, but also just our reputation, uh, just somehow around the state, they seem to see we've rebounded. Reputation seems to be uh, you know, coming back. Um, and uh, one of the sessions was about cannabis and how you really maximize that for your area. And we were able to speak to that and talk about our success stories at the Warwick Tech Center and Tech Park uh, and incentivizing Green Thumb that's going to be produced in Sativa as well. So it was a different year in that regard and we continue to make strong connections. And again, it's a very small pool of people that do what we do. So this is kind of a trade association where we can meet peers, share best practices, and it's been very helpful to me. Uh, we've also been hosting or, or holding regional IDA meetings with our, our peer IDA IDAs in the, in the, the Mid Hudson. Uh, we are hosting one on Wednesday, actually, where we're bringing Rockland County, Ulster, Sullivan, Putnam, Greene County, and such Duchess coming over to meet us, to talk about shared challenges, et cetera. Also talking about doing some marketing together again to educate the public on the tr truth about IDAs. Um, I'm presenting with Steve Gross at the at Nice Car, the New York State Commercial Real, uh, uh, Realtor Association, on June si on July 6th. I'm presenting to Wall Police Rotary, and I'm doing radio, you know, a few times a month and all of that. So I do sometimes get comments from members here. That's really my abbreviated uh, presentation. If you have any questions, I appreciate please. that. Any questions from the committee? Um, relative to the local labor monitoring, yes, sir. Um, have you thought about what you might need to do if both felons are in land provided services, architecture, and engineering to uh, a project prior to it getting there? Frank, it's a good question. Frankly, that's why we chose to, in case they have conflicts or working on any of those projects. We thought that that would be enough. We do have Loki Grill who's currently doing it, we could lean on. Uh, but we thought we'd be good with two. We will see that. Well, one's an architect, the other's mechanical, electrical engineering. And oftentimes, architects work with a mechanical engineering, electrical engineering firm to to do that portion of it. For Low key them. would be on on hold, uh, you know, on standby for that. But um, you know, we could consider a third firm if that becomes a problem. We can yeah. look at our RFP again and see who else is to do the and, work. And the likelihood maybe doesn't exist. So I, I'm just. You know, keep it in the back. But it's not like to be clear, though, the services they're providing, they're not providing MEP or architectural services, they're providing uh, accounting to, to us or 
It would sure really be sentient. They first. have an existing relationship. Yeah, we, we wouldn't with, want them on. No, no, no. Totally agree. Totally agree. But it has nothing to do with your discipline. It's 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 what they're approving. It's what they're reviewing and approving. Which it, is exactly. I'm sure that they're compliant. The reason we had a number of responses from engineering firms is they consider it really. They liken it to their construction administration work they do, where they go out on site and do it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So they find things right in line with that. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, it should be a conflict, but obviously. No. How are you making out with the board and uh, are they, is, is, are you finding it a challenge with um, needing members? What's well, the board on? is great. You, you had us full at seven and, mm -hmm. and just within a couple of months, two people resigned really because of their own personal conflicts, personal professional uh, scheduling conflicts mostly. Okay. Um, so I, I did speak with, with, um, with uh, leader uh, Benelli and she's, I know she's trying to reconvene because he did a lot of work and vetted people. And then they're kind of kick started again. I know it's probably frustrating. So uh, we do need it. We're a little short handed in that we to get to have a uh, quorum. We need a majority of our full board. So it needs to be four out of the seven. So just to have a meeting, all four out of our five need to show up and to get it uh, past something. We need four out of the seven, four out of five. So if one person dissents or doesn't show up, we can't even pass something we may want to pass. All right. So we're a little handicapped, but I'm not trying to put pressure on the legislature because again, I know you did a lot of work to do it. We'll move it along. I, I see. The, I know the importance of it. So it thank thank, you. thanks for asking. Thanks for sharing that. With Absolutely. Us. Wonderful. Any Anything questions? else? No. Thank you so much for your time. You give me later. Thank you. Thank I can all this. Good luck. Thanks so much. Thank you. All righty, without further ado, Marie Hallahan, President and CEO of Orange County Partnership for the quarterly update. May I have a motion to second? Second. Oh, we got received. Second. And Ramos. Skevich and Ramos, little R and R. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for being here today and welcome. Thank um, you so much. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is uh, for those of you who actually attended our MVP breakfast um, a couple of weeks ago. You might have heard me at the podium speak about this economic development team that we work with right now. When it comes to economic development, honestly, we hear it from our neighboring counties now, we really are the envy of uh, of our peers. Uh, and I really think that this particular moment in time, it's, it's like a perfect storm. We have some of the best leadership in the best seats and we all work together. And you're gonna see that because Steve's report is similar to my report in certain ways, because we're all working together on a lot of these projects. Each of us have our own strategic missions and we stay in our lane when we, you know, as, as we do our jobs, but there's a tremendous amount of overlap because we work so closely together. Um, and you'll see that as I go through. Um, some of the things that I wanted to share with you, the next slide, Sarah, thanks, sorry. <laughs> um, so we're reimagining, you know, you hear it in your respective roles. Um, when is the distribution centers gonna stop? Like, when is this gonna, when are we not gonna have another, you know, distribution center come in. First of all, they had a, a tremendous amount of valuable jobs, capital investment, tax, taxes. So let's just leave that on the table. And the market is just driving them through the door to us. We are getting so many leads for distribution centers. We have a lot of open space and land and we have the three highways. But what our board of directors decided that we would focus on is to sort of reimagine the future of our economy. And, and with that, diversity is key. So um, what we decided to start right now with the Orange County Partnership is to focus on some other industry clusters and try to take a proactive role in trying to get some new, new um, opportunities in. Advanced manufacturing, clean energy, food and beverage, that I think is very attainable. Um, medical device manufacturing, life sciences, which includes like consumer product manufacturing and some types of pharmaceuticals. So what we're rolling out right now is, is a site inventory program, we're calling it SIPs. And um, our partnership team is going to go around the county, visit our municipalities 
and try to make sure that the sites that we have in our portfolio that we're presenting for certain types of leads are exactly the sites that they have in their portfolio because a lot of municipalities have sites that we may or may not know about but the key to attract diverse industries is infrastructure that's it so we have to act like site like national site selectors that we deal with we have to better understand what infrastructure is at each of these sites right now does it have water and sewer to support you know a, a clean manufacturing plant something like that what is the utility um, availability and the bandwidth? So we're gonna do this um, outreach to each of the municipalities, take their temperature on what they're looking for, make get a better understanding of what sites could possibly support this type of industry and push it out to the national site selectors that represent the end users. So this is something that we're working on um, diligently. I'm sure you're going to hear a little bit more about it in my upcoming report because this just got rolled out. Uh, our first meeting is this week. So we'll, we'll continue to keep you apprised on that. Um, Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Council, I'm here with my colleague, Chris Young. Uh, we are kicking it off. Uh, Steve gave you the report, here's all the overlap, and I'm just gonna keep reminding you of some <laughs> of it. Um, the CFA project applications are coming through. The partnership is actually um, working to roll out a training session in the coming week. We're, we're uh, making sure that all of our Orange County colleagues are aware of how to apply. Orange County has a lot of CFA applications that we re review, like throughout the valley, there's a lot of them, but Orange County has always been um, a leader in a lot of applications. So the award, um, the awards will be announced in the fall, but right now we're working, this is full speed ahead there. What you may or may not know is that the new regime, and you know, um, Dr. Young is our leader um, now with the Regional Economic Development Council, is that Clients, customers, prospects, they can apply throughout the year, and it will be reviewed on a rolling basis. But right now is the heavy lift pushing in the applications and um, collecting them by July 29th, as Steve said. 17486, our collective efforts were, did, were a great success. Um, our original ask was for 500 million over five years to construct that third lane. They recently signed a memorandum of understanding in Albany to a um, an accompanying project list uh, provides us on it for the New York uh, DOT's five-year capital plan. And we're slated for 1 billion. So we actually doubled what we asked. So this is moving forward in the right way. It's gonna take a while. It's not gonna happen overnight, but we're keeping up the heat. And, and right now um, is the, is we wanna keep this in front of you because now while they're going through the EIS, we wanna make sure our voices continue to be heard because this is when, you know, sometimes uh, problems can arise with these types of um, projects. I, I was asked this morning on a coalition call for 17486, you know, how many times do projects get funded and not happen? It happens. Oh, wow. Yes, it happens and we all know it. So we're really keeping up that momentum. The next slide, Sarah, just shows you some of the, uh, never doubt the impact of a committed small group of individuals that you know, can really identify a problem, formulate a plan, and then execute. And I, I remember Joe Minuto, you, you were in some of our early videos, you know, um, supporting this. Oh, we, right, yeah. I remember when we yes, videoed you a couple of years back outside of Lemoncello's, and we used all of that marketing information to get to the right people to say that we really need this here. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing to work on that. So I wanted to give you a commercial developer update. Uh, we hear it all the time. Our competition would really kill for the relationships that we have right here in Orange County. If you look at those little logos at the bottom, developers are currently very active in Orange County. It starts with developers buying large tracts of land, getting them ready for projects, and then when when and, and getting the infrastructure necessary to those uh, sites to bring uh, projects in. Cressa is not technically a developer. Um, but they exist solely to represent occupiers of commercial real estate um, and not develop the property themselves. They actually have their own, you know, deck of, of um, companies that they want to find sites for. But this is a good one to have in our back pocket. They just brought us um, a project now to food a distribution client. Uh, but Cressa represents a lot of other industry clusters, data centers, life sciences, technology and media. So we are um, learning more about them, working with them, 
showing them sites throughout the county and um, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll give you more updates as that moves forward. The next slide is Brookfield Properties. Uh, this is a privately financed, this is a, a big time private finance uh, development company, another large scale developer that's recently entered our market. Uh, they purchased an industrial site and plan to construct on spec and spec always has been, you know, speculative development. There's speculators out there that are taking some very big risks. For in my world of economic development, it's a it's a very strong indicator that there's a confidence in our market, and they believe that if they're going to invest in a building, that someone will fill it. So this is one that you uh, stay tuned for. You're going to see some more from them. Matrix. Bill spoke about it. Steve spoke about it. Um, this is going on right now. Uh, they're responsible for one of the most significant projects in Orange County as Amerisource Bergen. You'll remember that. You'll remember Amscan, now Walgreens, and wineshipping.com right here in Goshen. Uh, you, you'll see that that ground is all cleared. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, wine, sorry, wineshipping.com is in Weiwayanda. I'm thinking of um, the other wine project you'll hear me talk about in a moment. But that one, um, there are discussions with tenants right now. So when Medline left Weiwayanda, they vacated the 500,000 square foot building in Weiwayanda. And uh, Morgan Stanley bought the building. So Medline could build their new building in Montgomery. And now that uh, building in Weiwayanda, we're, we're having discussions with tenants to fill that 500,000 square feet. So that's actively moving forward. Uh, Scanel, uh, they have a project at the old Shapiro Farm in the town of Weiwayanda. They have a project on 124 uh, Route 17K, and then another one on 61 Lazy Lane in Hamptonburg. Scanel is a major player in the um, distribution space. They're looking for a million in Weiwayanda, a million square feet, 140,000 square feet in Newburgh, and um, also undecided yet on what would uh, possibly go on in Hamptonburg. They're working through the approval process there now. So another um, major player. Next slide is Frisetto Companies. We all know them, especially those of us that are in the town of Wallkill on Tower Drive. We call that like the manufacturing row up there with um, Pratt and & Whitney and, and um, the others. But the Frisetto Companies currently have more than 800,000 square feet of really beautifully presented commercial space in Orange County. They do a beautiful job. Um, the partnership is working with CBRE on citing a potential tenant at the Montgomery Frisetto property right now. And on 103 Tower Drive, which was just constructed, um, they leased uh, and, and leased prior to the completion of that is a high-end lighting fixture distributor. Don't know if you know about them. Right yeah, right next door to you, right? Yeah. yeah. And so they took half of that building and the other half of the building is, is up for grabs now. So we're trying to market that as well. Uh, the next slide is RDM. This has been before you a million times. They have bought more land, right, Steve? I mean, there's so many properties that they bought, and in tandem, they're trying to get them all uh, shovel ready for end users. We're going to have to keep you up to speed on where that's going. Um, they have sites in Weyanda, Hamptonburg, Wallkill. Um, they were a New Jersey developer, but they're coming in big in Orange County and bringing projects with them. The next slide is Treetop Companies. Uh, Treetop is in uh, Wallkill, Port Jervis, and they also have uh, a big site in Cornwall. They're before the Cornwall Planning Board um, to try to get another distribution center down there. Uh, this is, they've been known for industrial and multifamily projects, and uh, another new name, maybe since the last time I spoke to you, yes. that Treetop is a new developer that we've been working with. And then GFI Partners, that's the Boston, uh, uh, Massachusetts-based developer uh, company. They're doing the Royal Wine uh, Project. Um, the developers that teamed up with Royal Wine, uh, they presented to the IDA board. You just heard Bill talk about that um, and scheduling a public hearing for that particular project in um, the village of Goshen at the old Kicker Frosh site. So this one... This one is another one that we're going to see this year. You can see going up this year, people working on that site this year. Right. And then Goshen Hospitality, it's a smaller one, but I put it in the deck because it is tourism based. Um, their draft environmental impact statement has been completed and submitted and received some comments. Uh, they're working with um, uh, several of our investors, you know, uh, engineers and um, architecture firms that are working on that. And we're assisting with complying hotel data compiling hotel data for their FEIS. So 
this is that that nice little cluster of tourism destination hospitality project in Goshen that you'll be seeing. So market dynamics is our next slide. And I just wanted to say that um, um, the prevalence of high power manufacturing opportunities continues to increase. There's a lot of federal investment in manufacturing and reshoring and chip fabrication that's driving new production and interest. Lessons learned from COVID-19 is manufacturers are, are seeking sites that offer multimodal transportation. We've had more requests for rail sites than I've seen in the 10 years before COVID. So there is opportunities out there and we're trying to marry them up. Um, and let me just tell you a little bit about um, the um, attraction leads. These are actual leads. So 21 of them right now in our portfolio are in manufacturing fiber and hospitality, and only seven are in distribution, but that's what seems to hit the paper because distribution projects, you know, are big. They're a million square footers and they're big name developers. So Royal Wine, um, eighth generation family owned company. That's the one that's coming to Goshen. You'll see that if the land is cleared, they're going to be constructing shortly. Um, Project Gourmet uh, is looking to manufacture and export chocolate. We're going to see more food and beverage manufacturing projects coming. And this particular lead um, came through our relationship with Royal Wine. Sure. So it, it does, there's a there's a ripple effect, you know, when you have more of these relationships. Project Fresh is the next one. This company submitted a um, an LOI mm -hmm. for the property on Kings Highway. Uh, They're also reviewing a site in Montgomery near 747. This is a, a, a very big hydroponic, hydroponic greenhouse uh, uh, produce production company, and their jobs actually play, pay pretty well, and there's 200 of them that would come with this particular project. Uh, Flower House is another um, project, <laughs> cannabis project. So we have a lot of them here. Yep, we have, we have quite a few of them here, and they keep coming. So. Um, we're assisting them with finding local contractors and vendors so they can utilize um, that they can utilize. And we also introduced them to SUNY Orange because they have a workforce development training programs for cannabis. So that marriage is, is happening as well. And those discussions are in place. We'd like to see this one land. Um, uh, and this would be about 150 to 200,000 square feet. Uh, Project Vernon is a company looking to cultivate and manufacture cannabis and cannabis-based products, um, working with high-level political and business professionals from Westchester County. Uh, the major focus for this company is providing good-paying jobs. Another cannabis one, big energy users, so the utility companies love them. They are also working with SUNY Orange, and uh, currently we have three um, marijuana manufacturers landed and working in Orange County, GTI, Pharmacan, and Sativa. So clearly there's a cluster and like some of the other clusters that we have, this is clearly a cluster and, and growing. And the average starting wage. For one, sure. Um, with regard to the can industry, um, mainly it's agricultural, but mainly they're growing indoors, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So my question is, are they locating on agricultural sites? So that's a good question. Um, Pharmacan took an industrial site. Um, uh, Sativa um, and GTI is in the Warwick Tech Park. Technically, it was uh, an agricultural yep. site, um, but it was developed and marketed as an industrial site. But certainly it is more ag out there than the others. And this uh, project Vernon is also looking for a site that's, I, I would say, um, the site that, that they're interested in is more ag more related. Ag. So I guess where my, where my mind is going with that is if, if land is there for agriculture, but they're building, they're growing inside, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I just want to make sure that that can recognize. Yeah. I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, there's a lot of ag um, uh, project sites throughout the county that are under greenhouses. Am I right? That that grow in greenhouses as well. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how to. You're not concrete based and, and secured. Well, most yeah. most of the development that's taken place, even residential, is on former agricultural ag. lands that yeah. were used in the past for agriculture. 
Yeah. Anyway. I that's an interesting. It kind of begs the question: once it's legalized and it's not so tightly secure, I wonder if there will be outdoor growing at some point. There's a huge security risk there. Yeah. Huge fences, armed guards. Yeah. Yeah. Cameras. So just the hemp over in the western. That's, that's why most of it's grown indoors. Yeah, but will that change when it's legal? I'm just curious. You got to secure it. Right. Still yeah. secure. It's yeah. a high value. Yeah. Country. Product. Interesting. Uh, Project Benny. This was an ESD lead. It came right out of the New York State office. Um, we're in discussion with the state um, and this and, and the prospect on this one. They manufacture rechargeable clean batteries for energy storage. Um, and this is part of the governor's plan to create green energy. They're going to need new market opportunities. Uh, this is a multi-county search, um, but we submitted sites in Wayanda, uh, city of Middletown, and the town of Walkell to try to land this one. So Project Plastic, um, this is in, in contract to purchase a recently approved 72,000 square foot building in the city of Middletown. We met with the, with the mayor last week um, about this. This is a very favorable jobs um, and they would be um, relocating their business in Orange County uh, from another New York State area. Uh, Project Flash is um, <coughs> a company considering a location in either Middletown or Montgomery uh, to locate 150,000 square foot food production distribution facility. Growth in the food and beverage distribution sector supports long-term strategy for growing and manufacturing sector. So again, like another um, uh, manufacturer that, that we're currently working on. And it's interesting because I haven't, I haven't actually presented in front of you for like three or four months. Mm, yes. And we looked back on some of the old projects that I presented the last time. Many have closed um, or you know about because of our colleagues that are that are sharing information. A lot of these are brand new. Excellent. So you can see that there is a lot of momentum out there, even you know, in this crazy world right now. There's still a lot of growth. Project Horizon is a Fortune 100 company. Um, uh, they want an existing building or site that can accommodate a half a million square feet. Um, the prospect visited two buildings in Orange County on the 8th of June. We are still working with them. Uh, it's going to be a, a highly automated distribution center. It's likely to go in a place that you know about. So hopefully that one will close. Uh, broker broadcasts. The only reason we put up this, this um, particular slide, I know it's just like Greek to you, but these are since November. This is how many broker broadcasts we have sent from our office to all of our local brokers and municipal leaders and yourselves to say we have projects out there, a prospect that, that needs a site. So just to give you an idea, that's a pretty stringent list of leads um, in comparison to other years like pre-COVID. So we're, I think we're in a pretty good spot right now. These are some expansion projects. We have 25 of them. Again, manufacturing leads the way. Amanda touched on the milk factory. We're also working with Michael Dorf on that. Um, the next slide are our pictures from our tour at the milk factory. I know Amanda had a few of them, but we, we wanted to show you that also. The timeline is approximately 18 months on this from the time they get approvals to be fully built. So this is just, this is gonna be a beautiful addition to um, Orange County. Um, Trade Trans. A company that ships uh, Dunkin' Donut and Baskin Robin products internationally, um, especially in the in, to India um, and to other markets. They're located right here in Orange County. They are busting at the seams, so they need some extra space. Um, we're assisting them to get 15,000 square foot for immediate use, but they also want to add 40,000 square foot expansion to their building um, that they are currently in. So that's another one. Pharmacan, another expansion. Um, they acquired LiveWell, a smaller company out of Colorado. And, um, and right now they need to grow their operation in the town of Hamptonburg. And we're working with them to see if we can make that happen. And Cardinal Health. Uh, Cardinal, I think, I ask Rick, I think they might have been the first one on Ely's Road. Well, the predecessor. Right. But I think they were the very first building on Neely Town Road. And with this expansion in the town of Montgomery, we're going to have three distribution centers over a million square feet. Excellent. And a year ago, we had none. 
in this county over a million square feet. So it's pretty interesting. So it's that, like Rick or Lenny or not. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, but they did start their earthwork already, and they're going to expand, um, you know, very soon. They're hiring a lot of local. Choice Films, Amanda covered that better than I can. Project Grizzly is a food and retail distribution. It's a Fortune 50 Swiss-based company. Uh, they are working with Scanel. Another example um, of, you know, how um, a big developer comes in, they prepare a site, and we have a relationship with an end user. So um, this is very confidential at this time. It's about as far as I can go with the details on this particular project, but um, that one is um, interested in the, in the Hampton Berg site. Uh, project Parchment. Uh, this is this is a tannery. It's an old fashioned tannery. Uh, we've done a broker broadcast for them and an individual site search for them. They're reviewing sites now um, and a site tour will follow. But this leather goods and, and parchment company, you know, they've outgrown their current uh, facility in the village of Montgomery and they're looking to expand. Um, and then Dino Park. You've heard that from everybody. I will not talk to you about that again. You know, all my colleagues, actually, every every meeting, we all sit together. We all, you Looking know, are sight. presenters. Yeah, and we've been working with them. And the Castle Fun Park, I have to say, nobody took it harder than the Castle Fun Park during COVID. I mean, they had a really difficult time trying to operate. And they're they're fully booked. They're they're moving um, forward, and now they're looking uh, to do another three million uh, capital investment, twenty six thousand square foot expansion in the town of Chester. So support them when your friends and family come in. Make sure you don't just go to Legoland. Go to the Castle Fun Park yeah, as well. Quite impressive business. Understanding it really, where it's starting out from. Yes, you know, it really very is. Small and just grow. Yep, a family owned business. Yep. Uh, President Container, we just toured them. Um, they, we just wanted to show you a few slides of their finished product, product 100,000 square foot expansion. They're hiring uh, an additional 50 jobs for that. And Resorts World, here's some pictures of that project right now. Um, they're back They're back on track uh, and they're, they're hoping to open in the fourth quarter of 2022, 225 jobs. 36 million in capital investment and 90,000 square foot of space. This is Newburgh? Yeah, this is at the at the Newburgh Mall. Mall. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna it's gonna really revitalize a mall that was was not doing very well. <laughs> and upcoming events. So our investor breakfast is coming up in um, October on October 4th, our annual event December 6th, and we'll keep you posted on that and please uh, follow us on social media. This is this is we all hope that you will and we also not only email you our uh, resource and results uh, e-newsletter but I think Sarah mails them like specifically to each of our legislators so I think you get them through email directly to you thank you so, any questions anyone any legislator thank you very much for thank you so in. much a wonderful presentation thank you so uh, much look forward to it. So, without further ado, uh, make a motion for the chair. So, no, no, no. Yes. Oh, okay. What? Uh, we have one public, more? Public Thank you all very much. Uh, <laughs> jumping ahead. <laughs> jumping ahead. <laughs> That's why you're still sitting there. You wait a <laughs> so, strike that. Um, uh, at this point, uh, it's just an announcement. We're going to set a public hearing uh, for the 2022-2023 Orange County Community College budget uh, on 8-4-22 at 3.15 p.m. No, we do not. That's just an announcement. So, now may I? <laughs> may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience today. I know we 